Lucy to the Melbourne Review of Books. Thank you. It's lovely to have you with us for our second interview in our series. I'm delighted. And today we're going to talk about uh, your book that's just been released in July 2015 called Blockbuster. Yep. But uh, first let's talk about you. Yes. Um, you are a Melbourne writer. Originally from Christchurch, New Zealand, which has links to the Hume story. Mm -hmm. And you are now um, a published writer of fantasy and sci-fi novels. Uh, you've also written children's and teenage writing, non-fiction and true crime. I've been all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I even started off doing poetry, so there you go. Oh, lovely. Um, and much like Hume himself has done much poetry. Yes, but I didn't start off by writing a... My first published work was not a um, ode to Wagner. Mm -hmm. But we do digress, so let's, let's go back to talking about you and your history. Yep. Uh, you're also an editor, a reviewer, an academic and teacher. I've sort of dipped in and out of academia and dipped in and out of creative writing and teaching and you know, done the various things you do to sustain the writing habit. <laughs> and we'll talk about that again later, about your writing, your writing um, inspiration. Um, you've also been nominated for several awards and uh, won the, did you say Duvart? Um, I've won the Orealis and the Dittmar. Dittmar, that's it. And um, been shortlisted for World Fantasy as an editor. So, wow. Quite a few. And um, your story, My Lady Time, uh, won that Dittmar Award. And um, it's an Australian Science Fiction Award. And um, Science Fiction was your first story yeah. into writing? It was, pretty, it was pretty much my first half of poetry. I went to a writer's workshop in Sydney and that pretty much introduced me to the scene smaller than it was in Australia at that time. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was that there weren't many women around in it, so you kind of stuck out and they had and the editors had some idea, oh well we really ought to have some women in these anthologies. <laughs> so there was a very nice period where every time an anthology um, was mooted, oh let's get some women. Let's ask Lucy. Right. And that, that it, it wouldn't, you're not quite in that situation now because there's a whole lot more women in the field mm -hmm. but, and it's a lot bigger. But yep. um, yeah, for a time, you were in a mi minority and it worked in your favour. You've also been described as a literary archaeologist, uh, which is not surprising the book that you've just written that we're going to talk about today, which is Blockbuster. Um, and tell us a bit about that book. Um, well, I became interested in the matter of the 19th century Melbourne and crime when I realised it had such a long history and I was working for Professor Stephen Knight as his researcher, which was a dream job because I'd go into the library and I'd read crime books right. yes, every lovely. day. Yes. And then at the end of it, I'd just um, finish off by, you know, go back to the University of Melbourne and tell them if they were any good or not. Mm -hmm. So this was very much a dream job. And I became aware of Mary Fortune, who was a very early woman crime writer, and that walked the main streets of Melbourne from the 1860s. And she overlapped with Fergus Hume, who came to Melbourne in 1886. And what he did was write the best-selling crime novel of the 19th century, um, the, Mis the Mystery of the Handsome Cab, and he set it in Melbourne. And then it went on to be published overseas. And it sold something like 500,000 copies across the world. Pretty much across the world. And in a very short period of time. So it was very much a blockbuster, hence my title of the book. Mm -hmm. And so I was interested in the story of Hume, how he got to write such a book, how it defined the genre. And it was crime fiction was emerging as a publishing genre at the end of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. And so he pretty much find the genre as a publishing category and a Conan Doyle with Studying Scarlet, his first Sherlock Holmes book, that couldn't get published until after The Handsome Cab was out in England. So, but mind you, Sherlock Holmes didn't take off immediately, but humour the major factor in creating the audience for Sherlock Holmes. And in fact, um, if I recall directly, your book talks about the rivalry between um, Arthur Conan Doyle and you? Well, um, they were writing about the same time, but Hume was much more successful, and so Conan Doyle was most annoyed that his book had made such a big splash, and his, um, his work had, uh, had not really uh, been noticed much 
mm-hmm. at the time, and said so it was it was outrageous people and it was just sold by you know, sold by advertising. He was he was quite jealous. Uh, so, looking at the book, we'll start at the very uh, the very first thing that Hume does in the book, which is that he dedicates the book. And if I recall correctly, Hume likes to change his dedications or he use can, his dedication yeah. as a tool. Yeah. Um, in this case, he dedicated it to James Payne, who is the editor of the Cornhill magazine, uh, for his kind encouragement. Now, James Payne is famous in the annals of detective fiction for rejecting the study of Scarlet, mm-hmm. which is the first novel, a first story of Arthur Conan Doyle. Yep. Yeah. So, and I was looking at the dates, and I thought, well, I think there's a reasonable chance that um, James Payne also rejected the mystery of a handsome cat. Um, because the dates line up, and if that, in that case James Payne would therefore have missed out on the two hottest properties of the 19th century in crime fiction, so that's most amusing. So what you've done, if I understand correctly, is this book Blockbuster is, if I understand correctly, the history of writing, of Australasia, of uh, crime writing in particular, of publishing, around that 20th century between the 1900s and the 2000s and you sent all that history around the publication of that book, The Mystery of the Handsome Cow. It's largely the history of the book and its later permutations, mm-hmm. um, which includes a film and plays and the copycat murder and a few other things, but yeah. it's there's not much information available about him, there's no diaries, very few letters. Um, perhaps this is, is intentional, I don't know, but mm-hmm. there was some information, it was all chiefly about the handsome cat, so I thought, well, rather than write a code of the grave biography of Hume, mm-hmm. you could write it about the book and how he came to write it, growing up in Dunedin and coming to Melbourne mm-hmm. and writing the book and what happens thereafter. Mm-hmm. And that, that makes a fairly neat package mm-hmm. in terms of... Um, Storyline. Storyline, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, I'll do it that way. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, if, if, as a result of this book coming coming out, there's more information emerges on Hume, somebody says, oh, hello, he was my great, 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 great uncle, and I have a, and I have a um, letters of him, then that's wow. good, I could use it. But that hasn't happened yet because right. it's only been released in Australia. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's possible something might emerge. Mm. Okay. So, uh, you yourself um, have dedicated your book, Blockbuster, to Rowan Gibbs. Tell us about Rowan Gibbs. Rowan Gibbs is from Wellington, New Zealand, and he's Hume's bibliographer. And mm-hmm. so he set out to trace all the publications that Hume did. Mm-hmm. And it's like 140 novels. And heaven knows how much um, poetry, short stories, reviews and you know who knows what is out there translations and so Rowan was incredibly helpful when I put this book together because he sent me a DVD of his material and from that we could sort of piece the whole thing together so I thought it was only fair that he had the book there to 